bright duty every student matters so students we just discussed about various modes of asexual reproduction now in the next section we'll study about another type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction the sexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction which involves two parents the male and the female with the formation and fusion of gamete cells so the features of a sexual reproduction are firstly it is biparental that is usually two parents are involved the male and the female second gamete formation so in male and female body special reproductive cells are formed which are called gametes the gametes contain half the number of chromosomes as compared to the parent organism for example the human cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes but the gametes the male and the female gametes contain half the number that is only 23 chromosomes so gametes are the special reproductive cells which actually take part during sexual reproduction third fertilization the male and the female gamete fuse together to form a new cell which is called zygote now during fertilization the half chromosomes come from male gamete and the half chromosomes come from female gamete so when they fuse together the new cell has same number of chromosome as the parent cells this is called fertilization now this fertilization can be internal fertilization or external fertilization i'll tell you what is the difference now if the fertilization takes place inside the female body then it is called internal fertilization as it occurs in uh, humans dogs cats and many other animals the male gamete enters the female uh, female body and the fertilization occurs inside the female body and the embryo grows inside the female body but in external fertilization the fusion of male and female gamete takes place outside the body as in frogs and fishes the next uh, feature is variation as i told you earlier since half the chromosomes are coming from male and the half are coming from female a new combination of chromosomes of dna is formed this leads to a lot of variation in the generation to generation so the first generation of organism although they are similar to the parents but they are not exact copies this variation helps in evolution and adapting to the environment these are the features of sexual reproduction now we'll study about sexual reproduction in flowering plants first let us study in detail about the structure of a bisexual flower this is the structure the pedicel is the uh, stalk like structure through which the flower is attached to the branch then there is a swollen part which is called the thalamus after this the first layer is the green colored leaf like tiny structure called sepals now the function of the sepal is to protect the flower during buds uh, when it is in the bud stage it protects the flowers and when the flower blooms it gives support to other parts of the flower the next layer is the colored part which is called the petal or the corolla now this colored petals they are sometimes they have fragrance also they are scented so the main function is to attract birds and insects for the process of pollination so this also has a little protection part but the main function is to attract insects and birds then the next layer is the male reproductive structure which is called the stamen each stamen has two parts first is the anther which is at the top and the, this stalk like structure called the filament this anther bears a yellow powder which is called which is called the pollen grains the pollen grains contain the male gamete so this anther plus filament this forms the stamen which is the male reproductive part of the flower in the center as you can see here this is the female reproductive part it is called the carpel or the pistil it has three parts the topmost sticky part is called stigma then the stalk like structure is called the style and there is a swollen part in, at the bottom which is called the ovary the ovary bears small ovules 
these ovules have the female gamete. So the male gamete are, the, are in the pollen grains and female gametes are in the ovules. This is the structure of a bisexual flower. It has both the female and the male reproductive organs. If a flower contains only one, either male or the female reproductive part, then it is called a unisexual flower. Right now, what happens during uh, during sexual reproduction? The first step is pollination. Pollination is transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the from the anther to the stigma. That is from the male reproductive part to the female reproductive part. This simple transfer is called pollination. If the pollination occurs within the same flower, flower that is from the anther. The pollens are transferred to the stigma of the same flower or of the flower of the similar type in the same plant, then it is called self pollination. But if this transfer takes place from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the similar type but to a different plant, then it is called cross pollination. So, pollination is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. If it occurs in the same flower or in the same plant, then it is called self-pollination. But if it occurs from one plant to another plant, it is called cross-pollination. For cross-pollination, we need agents like wind, water, birds or insects. They help in transfer of pollen grains. So, the first step during sexual reproduction in uh, flowering plants is pollination. Students. The first step involved in the sexual reproduction in plants is the pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower. The pollen grain contains the male germ cell or the male gamete and it has to fuse with the female gamete. Now, before the process of fertilization takes place, the pollen grains are to be transferred from anther to the stigma. This process is called pollination. Now, this uh, video will help you understand the topic of pollination. All right. So, let us begin. Pollination. The pollination is transfer of pollen grains from the ripe anther to the stigma of the flower. The transfer of the pollen grain to the stigma can take place in two ways. The first one is self-pollination. Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the same flower or another flower born by the same plant. This is called self-pollination. It, it can occur in bisexual flowers which contain both the anther and the stigma, both the male and the female reproductive part. The second one is cross-pollination. That is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of flower of one plant to the stigma of flower of another plant but of the same species. This is called cross-pollination. It brings about variation in the offsprings because two different plants are involved which have different variations. So, this pollination will bring about variation in the offsprings. This is possible only if the, both the plants are, belong to the same species. Cross-pollination can occur both in unisexual flowers as well as in bisexual flowers. Now, what happens after pollination? Second step is fertilization. As the pollen grain falls on the stigma, it starts growing a pollen tube. The pollen tube grows into the style and enters into the ovary. Then the pollen grain present inside this, the male gamete present inside the pollen, it travels into this tube and reaches the ovule. So, here the ovule and the pollen grain, they fuse together. This process of fusion of male and female gamete is called fertilization. So, first pollination, transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma. Then this pollen tube grows and the pollen grain travels inside the tube and for fertilization. So, fusion of ovule and pollen grain to form a new cell. This new cell is called zygote. The zygote then develops, it multiplies and grows into an embryo. This embryo grows to form the seed and this ovary will produce the endosperm and this whole part will uh, give rise to fruit, fruit bearing the 
seeds. After fertilization, what happens? The other parts, the petals, the sepals, they shed off, right? Only this ovary part, it grows to form a fruit. Now, inside the fruit, there is the reproductive part, be it reproductive part, that is the seed. The third step after pollination and fertilization, the third step is germination. Now, as you can see, the seed has a dormant embryo, right? So, when the conditions are favorable, suppose the seed is sown into a moist soil, it will get warmth, water, nutrients, everything, it starts germinating. This process is called germination. When the seed gives rise to a new plant called seedling. The first the plumule which grows into the shoot and the radical which grows into the uh, root part. So, a seed gives rise to plumule and, uh, plumule and radical which grows into a new plant. This process is germination. So, you can see pollination, germination, fruit formation, and lastly, germination gives rise to a new plant. So, this is the mode of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Now, what are the advantages of seed formation? Firstly, seeds usually they are very light in weight. So, they can be easily dispersed to far away distances for producing the new plant. Secondly, importantly, seed is covered with a hard covering coat, okay, which makes it resistant to unfavorable conditions like if there is drought or very high temperature, very low temperature, seeds remain in the dormant stage. Only when the conditions are favorable, when it gets moisture, when it gets warmth and air, it starts growing into a new plant. So, that is the advantage of seed formation. So, with this we covered our sexual reproduction in flowering plant. Now, let us move on to the next section.